Has anyone seen any buffalo? Buffalo? Or lambs? Where? I don't, I only see humans. You are so I want all animal friends. Do you like animal friends? Of all different kinds, I do. And I'm wondering, goddesses, have you seen any turkeys? Or flamingos? Or any birds that aren't this big or smaller? I think I know why. And if you want to help me in my love crusade to bring all of life back, friends, I think I know what we need. We need a bunch of soil, and we need to literally look at our hands and go with the intention to love and heal. With the intention to love and heal. And then we get our hands dirty in the dirt. And instead of saying, ooh, gross, let's kill it. We will say, how can I contribute? And instead of saying, ew, germs, gross, sterilize it. We will say, what could be symbiotic? How could we make it more life enriching? An environment not only of symbiosis, but in a simulation to the high-tech thing we have going on. It could be super sweet if we start to integrate all of life. Who's with me? Do you want to help me bring animal friends? Okay, okay. Do you like sheep? <laughs> no, I don't. What's your favorite animal? I'll bring your favorite animal. Do you like lions? Has anyone seen any giraffes? Humans, I'm worried about us. We can't just have the same creature over and over and over again. It feels like cancer on a super organism that we're living on. When we're little tiny molecules to a big breathing being known as Mama Gaia, and we go wherever we want and eat whatever we want and do whatever we want and kill all of life wherever we go. It sounds like cancer. I am Wa, or Wa, and some people know me as Daisy. This is the Goddess Temple. It's an intentional space that I created that continues to evolve. So we started as the Healing Hut, and as I told you before, I love communication. So Venice Beach is a place where the artists come, the creative people come, and um, the traumatized come. And in a way, I, I feel that the most eccentric, the people with the biggest personalities, are the ones who have the strongest emotions. And um, our trauma can be a gift, it can be a treasure, if we can become emotional alchemists. And if we can learn new ways to think that dissolve enemy images and dissolve stories and help us connect to ourself, connect to our needs, the change that we want to see in the world when we're creating an evaluation about someone else or an evaluation about ourselves, positive or negative, to be conscious that we are evaluating and to know that, that there's cognition which wants to keep us safe and then there's resonance which is where learning and growth happens and people wonder why traumatized people and learning disabled people we're learning that everything comes from trauma that when there's violence it's because violence has been done that things happen to us get injected into us and then they become our strategies it becomes what we learn because some some way or another it worked on us or we just try them because our mirror receptors have now laid down the foundational framework because if we experience it or we see it, it's a lot easier to then do it too. And it's not really that important to figure out the why because then we perseverate in cognition. That's why we have justice systems where we evaluate, think, and the thinking, we come up with all of our judgments and our stories. And then after we think, then we strategize and we've, our laws have already done that for us. We have our like punishments that we do and rewards and coercions and 
We come in with like a lot of demand, energy, and power over, and this is our conditioning. So my temple represents a place where I'm not a teacher, I come here to learn too. And it's a place where I wanna find my own interdependence, I wanna find my tribe, I wanna find my people, and I want to in, it, attract it. Because um, like any awakened yogi or goddess in this time, I built my temple and I am embodying the change I wanna see in the world. So not by like giving people advice, but one of the goddesses I work with, I do communication coaching yo with yoga and breath work and somatic experiencing. And my trauma hearing is the healing is all about resonance. So one of my goddesses uses strategies of self harm and she has three weeks off meth. And I've only been working with her three weeks. She's already stopping the self harm. Like we're, we watch really quick transformations because I'm not a therapist giving her diagnosis, telling her what's wrong with her. I'm saying, of course, there's great wisdom in banging your head on the cement. Look how powerful you are. Only a, a warrior queen could create blow after blow after blow with her forehead. And look how beautiful these red paint spatters of blood are. It's incredible what you could do. And we can also take that energy and alchemize it. But I, I tell my goddesses and anyone who comes here, and even with myself, that if I love myself up, I meet myself where I'm at with resonance, with compassion, with empathy, with love, then I can be creative and conscious and change it. We have a society that shames, that is stuck in the evaluating, thinking, strategizing mind. Resonance is the part of us where big, open, unanswered questions are are a regular thing like we don't have to figure it out when we become more evolved <coughs> stuff happens through spontaneity and flow like I wake up I don't really know where, how my needs are gonna get met but I trust and I create interdependence and relationships and I have relationships with plants that bear fruit I know a mulberry tree I can eat as much mulberries from for three months from me in March, April, and May. And then there's an elderberry tree, and these trees know me. Every time I grab some mulberries and I caress them, they want to be touched just as much as us. And and um, before you biked by, I was singing a song. Yeah, have my animal friends gone? Have you seen any elephants around here? Have you seen any buffalo? I haven't seen any big birds bigger than this size, and I heard a story about rodents getting killed as soon as they're spotted, and humans help me. Does anyone eat? But you know where the animal friends are. It's human after human in a repeating story that's a never-ending, same old rigid programming that the humans have created in a merit-based system of a market economy that kills everything that's not a human. Humans, where have all the animal friends gone? I want my animal friends and I want my elder friends to be surrounded by children. And why is it so unnatural with a nuclear family with one parent or both parents at work and the children with every same age human in a classroom? It doesn't work. But when we lean and melt into the flow of going outside and melting into earth and figuring out ways to plant food. By the way, look, this whole thing. We're hiding it with leaves and wood flooring, but this is all soil. The boardwalk? See, this is all soil. The boardwalk used to all be grass. Who says we can't bring it back? And whenever the city comes and dumps sand or cuts down our trees, we'll just bring more trees. It's a love crusade, not a war. In love crusades, Gandhi got it all wrong. He thought it was nonviolence. No wonder everyone stood in a line to get beat up. That's boring and sounds painful. Now with the love crusades, we just send Care Bear stairs. And with a twinkle in our eye, we say, of course you feel happy, yeah. And then we give empathy and acknowledge hurt. And we learn that there's actually a process 
to working through stuff and that these neural pathways have atrophied in our brain, but they're still there. Just like how we imprison our feet and then we can't do cool stuff with our feet like that. And we're supposed to be able to all do cool stuff with our feet. We're supposed to have a pincher grasp. We're supposed to be able to do cool stuff with our feet. And we're supposed to be able to do even cooler stuff with our brains because when we have a fight, one of my favorite things that I do here at the God's Temple is rift resolution and mediation. It's impossible to fight if all of a sudden someone goes, you're just giving each other negative evaluations of one another. But really you want more and then reframe what they're feeling, what they're needing just to show that everyone shares the same values. And then we could say we're too lovable for this. We all need to hug right now. So rift resolution is my favorite because right now the, the way we do it is with the punishment and reward system, there's a winner and a loser. And these are systems of um, compromise. Systems of compromise are not resonant because they don't include the needs and care of everyone. It's, it's always like a one up and a right wrong and a good bad and, and resonance. It's more about caring for the collective and instead of compromise, there's a process that I study, and this is my teacher, Mickey Kashtan, who I go to every Friday. And she teaches a process called convergent facilitation. And the process moves us from compromise, which is what we're in now with voting, and the new way, and humans don't, humans know the system sucks and they think there's no other way because these neural pathways have gone. But, but the ancient indigenous know this wisdom. All of the needs are named and then and then we sit in resonance and it gets done through flow. And and then we don't have work anymore. We have people honoring their willingness and capacity and a lot of the work doesn't get done because it's not meant to. Because when we don't do compromise, there's something called integration happens. And feelings all of a sudden start to get felt because when we get out of evaluations, we talk about what we feel and what we want. and what we value and the change that we want to see and we're in a regenerative learning process and cognition is about like picking apart and evaluating and finding usually it's looking through the frame of what is wrong and we could sit and perseverate there forever so with integration and rift resolution and I use that process in my own world some of the deepest connections are the, are the people I have explosive fights with and a lot of these young homies out here like they, they like to steal a lot. And a lot of them start off by stealing something of mine and because of how I work with them, we become our chosen family. And I could always trust these guys and have to worry about leaving my stuff, but sometimes it takes just letting that person know that there's nothing that they could do that will stop us from being each other's rocks and that actually honoring our willingness and capacity and knowing when to disconnect and knowing what our needs are, that if we need space, we need a breather, even if it's a year a breather, like that relationships are safer and healthier in a world of integration and, and holding the self and other. And with compromise, even our own needs don't met and compromise like it, we should, we have to, we look at a to-do list. The earth is, is trembling, and it's not just because of human behavior, but humans are, are disconnected from the relationships that we evolved in together with, and we're not, like the nuclear family, a lot of the stuff that we're told is not enough. Like we need to actually have a love that's non-attached because even take earth, like when you own earth, then all of a sudden you have to do all this shit. You have to like fix this and move that and clean this and pick up after that and protect it from this and keep people from trespassing and keep it. But when you're the caretaker of her, when you don't own anything, then all of a sudden you just make sure that there's enough food for everyone because I don't own her, I'm the caretaker. So, so like, oh my God, all the bugs are eating our food. Well, what eats bugs? Birds. So let's bring in the birds. And by the way, we gotta plant more food because the bugs are hungry. And then, oh my God, we brought in too many birds. Well, um, let's bring in the cats. And now, I mean, there's, and I don't even claim to have the wisdom. I don't know. I am on the beach doing two things. I awaken and I unite. 
And that is why you see me with the sanitation guys and the cops. But I also talked to LADWP. I also talked to the firemen. I talked to all of the storekeepers here. Um, the owner of Ale House and I go to yoga. I, the Ale House is one of my families. And the Ale House, I treat them like a living room because I know living outside, everyone always wonders about my hair. I don't put any chemicals or heat on my hair. I'm just very loving to it. And then when I, the way I get my curls is I braid it, and then after it's braided, I just twist it up in a bun. <laughs> so people always ask how my hair looks so perfect. We can live outside and be clean and have dignity and take care of ourselves. And we can do something that we can't do with market economy because market economy replaces fellowship, community, interdependence, trust, and belonging. How about your fashion? Oh yeah, um, so they bring clothes to the boardwalk and give clothes out and a lot of times I make my own clothes with different stuff. So like a lot of the really cute outfits that you see me wearing, like the little one piece rompers, that will be like a men's t-shirt that I got and turned into a romper. Can you talk about nutrition and substances? Um, well I'm Cali, I'm Cali sober and I would, you could call me like a weed shaman. So I started off smoking a lot of weed and the more work I did on myself, the less weed I smoked. So plant medicines are an amazing tool for feeling if done in an intentional way. If you're just gonna like, I've only microdosed on shrooms and I'm Cali sober, I don't do any other substances. When people see me and I'm free and uninhibited, it's because I let all parts of myself come up. I let my baby self come up and my baby self is the one who wants to drive. My baby self is the one whose eyes are bright and the, and the jaw is unclenched and my baby self is bewildered and if you squeeze me, just love comes out because I'm just so full of love. And I have all these other selves too. I have like warrior queen and, and there's a psychologist who calls this internal family systems. like reintegrating these parts of ourselves that we were told were bad so plant medicine helps with that it can help you get like strong emotions and then i really enjoy kundalini yoga paired with it so you can do breath work and learn how to calm your nervous systems like i used to get horrible anxiety attacks when i would smoke weed and i learned to do breath work and calm my nervous system and it's been an amazing tool and now like I, I might I like to do a bong rip in the morning and then I really don't have to smoke like I and then if I don't have top shelf I don't smoke so personally I've experienced plant medicine is like the tool that we use I don't really believe that way about um, like medicine you get from psychologists psychiatrists because those block the receptors and those actually block us from feeling and I believe it's better to just have like the rawness, like I needed to rage for a whole year. And do you see me with the cops now? Like I used to just allow myself to completely rage, but I did it with consciousness and love. So I was able to watch myself and, and then I became, you know, you're in a super learning state when you love yourself. You are in a super learning state. You don't have to just be a child that's rubbish. It's because children are in alpha and theta and parents will sit there and berate their kids and tell them what's wrong with them and speak a different language than their kids. And the kids will sit there, take it in, and they'll translate it to, ooh, mommy needs this, mommy needs space, mom. And the kids will know the needs and then they're like, wow, mom needs space for me, mom needs... Kids are smart. Like, we come in here with the wisdom. Babies have amazing intelligence. Um, so we all have wisdom. I went on a tangent when we talked about nutrition. But nutrition is, is something that we do here too. Like, we feed people on Saturdays. And um, I eat raw vegan mostly. I rarely, I haven't had meat in years. And sometimes I have fish. But yeah, diet's really important. What do you normally eat? And substances are important. Like, 
I think it's more important what you don't put in your body than what you do. Like, don't put, sh I don't eat refined sugar. Refined sugar is a drug. I know it's a drug because it took two weeks to withdraw from it. And then one time I ate four cookies and four hours later I had a crash. It was like, like sugar is a drug. So I think it's more important what you refrain from eating. Um, what was the question? What do you normally eat? Like, uh, I usually eat, like I go to Earth Cafe a lot and Ale House makes me veggie burritos and I eat at Cafe Gratitude and, um, yeah, those are my spots. And I have a lot of people who want to take me places to go get me food. So a lot of my food gets bought for me. And um, I try, like I... Um, How about Irwans? Irwan? I like Irwan. I don't go there that much though because it's not close. And I like going places where I know people. So like I go to Earth Cafe and they know I live outside and they know if I don't have money, they'll just give me my coffee. So you drink coffee mm -hmm. every day? Yeah. So that's a drug too. I know. I went from like nine shots a day to one shot a day. What about alcohol? No, I've been sober four and a half years. So, and that's what I was saying about it's more about what you don't put in your body. All that stuff, I use all that stuff as a tool to numb. And there's wisdom in those strategies too. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about what's on the banner and some of the things that you do in the empowerment zone? Um, so I specialize in, so Marshall Rosenberg is from the 1970s and he's kind of like a, a Ram Dass who never got discovered. He's truly awakened and he created nonviolent communication and I teach communication now, but my communication has like just it has all these other different things. So Marshall Rosenberg was the teacher of my three communication teachers I go to. So I go to three peer groups a week and at this temple, I provide other people with the Zoom links so we can all do these calls together. So there's Yvette Erasmus, Sarah Payton, and Mickey Kashtan. So we learn neuroscience, we learn um, like dialogue work, processing, ways to dissolve enemy images and we look at exactly what enemy images are because there's an upside and a downside to everything and there's an upside to enemy images and a downside so just we geek out on communication empathy share circle is something i'm doing today but just with goddesses so that's basically like like think of emotions as like as energy that's why it's emotion it's energy and motion so when we do empathy, we allow energies to literally rise. And that's why you, you could literally feel like, ooh, like the vibrations are really high. I can feel my energies elevating. And even just saying it, it's like there's a knowing that it feels good. It helps us to feel lighter. So empathy share circles are about somatic experiencing and trauma heal, just all different modalities of trauma healing through feeling and acknowledging emotions and resonating with each other, which means we don't give each other advice, we just go, oh, okay. So do you feel sad? Yeah, that is sad. That's it. So that's empathy. Rift resolution is where we take like two, these two people fighting and then the tendency is this person tells this person what they want and how they feel in terms of what's wrong with them. And then this person doesn't hear what this person wants or needs. They just hear a bunch of criticisms and negative evaluations. So then they try to defend and deflect and each person gives each other advice. I sit in the middle, I allow it to happen. And I allow, and then I walk people and coach people through the translation work. So, ooh, this person is actually saying like um, that they need more understanding and clarity, and they're actually telling you that they want to connect deeper. Like, did you hear that? So yeah, they did just tell you what a terrible, horrible person you are, and the tendency is to just take that piece and be like, ooh, I'll just take my terrible, horribleness far away. But, but we're not hearing the underlying need, which is no. 
this person wants to connect deeper. This person does not want you to go away. So a lot of times people just don't hear each other at all. So I help with that, rift resolution. And that comes in really handy on the boardwalk. I use it with cops. I use it, I call them the deepest scoops. I use it with everyone. Um, positive reframing is kind of the same thing. Like our evaluate, even our positive evaluations, it's, I feel like it's much more rich when we get in touch with how our needs are getting met. Like, like, ooh, this is really meeting my need for self-expression and for sharing my gifts. And this is a celebration because it's, for me because it's a manifestation of the work I've done on myself. So that's um, kind of positive reframing. Trauma healing we talked about. Oh yeah, and then body. So I do acrobatics out here. You probably have video of me doing my stuff yeah. on people's bodies. So I dance on bodies and then I teach my acrobatics to people. And what's cool about it is imagine week three. Almost done, almost week four. This is up, see I always know when there's new people. We got a new girl too. Now we got a girl on the team. See, I, I noticed, I know all my city workers. We got a girl, it's her first week, it's his fourth week. So I pay attention to my community members. Um, ooh, and all the city workers, it says no men, but all the city workers can come. Otherwise it's a goddess temple. But guys, it's invitation only, because otherwise I get un overrun with guys. Um, so flow strokes is, ooh, it's just like, that's my baby. I created flow strokes, and it was so awkward at first, and now it's evolved into like these long, loamy, loamy strokes that feel like Thai massage, and teach our feet how to be a second set of hands. Flow strokes is amazing. And what's cool is it feels really good. Flow strokes is body work. It's also yoga. It's also like just a way to learn healing touch and to learn that we can receive authentic love through touch. A lot of us have to question touch. We don't know if it's exploitive. We don't know if there's an expectation. Breath work has been a huge part of my personal development. I was like high on breath work for three weeks and it was kind of miserable even though it was very profound but it was a little miserable because I was like going crazy from the dimethyl trip to me and it, this is all from breath work and it just looked a little bit it was just this profound knowing where I was like everything is God. <laughs> it's like we're all God and it just it was like so profound to me. So breath work, fuck yeah, mantras and singing, you guys always hear me sing, so I'm all for singing, like you ever notice toddlers, yes, and they'll play and they love to sing, and, and then even like if you watch old cartoons and like our grandparents, gra not grandparents now, but grandparents back in the day, they'd be walking like, <laughs> like we don't, we stop singing, and so singing's important, like, Singing represents thriving. Not the kind where we would go in church and we hold a book and we're like, da, 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 and we're bored as fuck. Like really getting in our body and moving and singing and dancing is, it's important for our soul. And then we can start to do all of this stuff here can just be done here. And we don't need any of that shit because once it's integrated, we just move and touch and we don't have to like always tinker and figure shit out. Like we don't even need to talk that much humans. Like we use very little words when we're in resonance. And um, singing lets us know that we're thriving. And if you look at birds and you look at the indigenous, they wake up and they sing and dance. They go to bed, they sing and they dance. Eye gazing is incredible. It's pretty self-explanatory. Dance circles. Contact improv is like OG goes to contact improv with me. He sets up over there. And that's like acrobatics, but dance acrobatics, and it's very like artsy and slow. And stretching and breathing. Oh yeah, and then this part. So I showed you guys my soil. I put 60 weed plants. See that corner right here? <laughs> oh, I could walk over there and show you. But if you look, all of this is sand. And at the end of that corner, it's all soil. And I put red worms and I put 
60 marijuana plants. They died though, because they have to be planted in February. So, but now other people are helping. I knew I just needed to start doing it on my own and other people would come, which is what happened. And now we have a guy bringing soil every Wednesday. So I'm thinking like every Wednesday we'll do planting. And then that way, like, if we just do it then, we just get the plants then. We don't have to worry about the city throwing everything away. And the goal is to get a biodiversified food forest. And the food is gonna attract animals, so then we're the caretaker. We'll, we'll stand on our land, we'll say we're advocates of these animals' freedom. We're the caretaker. This is no man's land. Literally, that's what we call it, no man's land. Because if the cops chase me when I'm topless, when I got my shirt off, no one cares that much, so they chase me. And as soon as I cross over no man's land into Santa Monica, I'm good. They could even see me here from the grass. They don't care. Same with Santa Monica. I just come right over here. They're fine. So that's why it's called No Man's Land. We also call it No Man's Land because this is a goddess healing temple. So we want this to be like the goddess area. And then the men, there's something very powerful about women healing together and men healing together. So guys, go find your thing. And then we can all, we have like community events that we meet at. And then, uh, we need lakes and rivers. So I talked to LADWP. In fact, we could go over and talk to, I know all those guys over there. I sing musicals to them about how they're superheroes. Look at the incredible work they do. And there's pipes under there. So we're gonna create rivers there. And, um, and lagoons, because the rivers will be cold. So we'll have the biologists and the, just whoever knows how to make water hot. Again, I'm just the awakener and uniter. So unite and awaken humans as the caretakers of earth and create a world of need, need-based systems. Market economy can stay too. Costa Rica has both worlds and we need both. Because we, I like having cool stuff too. Um, and then we make a high-tech heaven on earth for all of life. Evolving into a new earth and new human. And we all know we need this. So... Oh well, we'll catch them another time. They'll be there on Monday. But it's important that we talk to everyone and people on the ground because it's not gonna be through voting and systems of compromise this time. We're gonna need a new mind. And that's why I don't touch money here too. I won't take donations or anything. I keep, I keep it separate. So when I do commodify, it's like separate because I want it to be completely pure, like no market economy to tinker or touch what I'm doing. So when people take your <laughs> sessions, then... Even the, yeah, no, I don't touch money. Even the guy who brings the soil, I told him, don't bring the soil unless it feels like play. Don't bring the soil unless you want to contribute to what I want and unless you want to be a part of my tribe. How Otherwise, are, I don't want you to. Are you available for Zoom for if people want to Zoom you or, or contact you? Uh, I would do like a Zoom coaching call for people. And I would have to think about one-on-one -on -one because I'm a wild human. So I live very like in the moment. And I live in an area where a lot of stuff is happening. Is it dangerous for you to be living here on Venice? Ooh, I, I face violence all the time. I love it. It's beautiful. The last time I got attacked, I, look at, I looked at the guy. I said, you're way too lovable to be acting like this. And I don't know who's mistreated you, and, but you've probably been mistreated all through life or you wouldn't be acting this way right now. And how on earth do you expect to connect deeply when you're acting like this? You're too lovable. And, and then, and because I was telling him he had to go, and then he had attacked me. I said, no. So then he just started crying. I'm like, of course, of course. Your tears are welcome here. Of course you feel how you feel. And he's just, this just killed me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I go, look. Right now I got to honor my own capacity. And it's sleepy time. Because it was like 2 in the morning. I was like, but come back in the morning, and you'll see that I do care. And if you come at the intentional time I set in my intentional space, only you can only come by invitation. Men can only come by invitation. You're invited. You come for a healing. And now I see this guy all the time. But yeah, I get attacked. I get attacked all the time. 
I'm not afraid though. My love's too powerful. Inside of us, and it involves a twinkle in our eye and a friend saying that we really are a super high hero instead of doing what we do over and over again under the rigidity and humiliation and shame based power over that the merit based systems are using on us we can say what need is up for me and what's my deep longing and i bet it's to be around a bunch of other breathing beings not just a repeating human every time the same old thing a human Oh look, an elephant! Oh shit, it's another human. Oh, it sounds like a goat. No, it's a human. Bye.